This is the Nokia Lumia Icon. This is the Samsung Galaxy S5. Each represents some of the best its platform has to offer, and each is available on America's largest network for about the same price. If you're due for a new phone and you're on the fence, which should you choose? Ultimately, that decision is yours and yours alone, but we're here with some information to help make it easier. I'm Michael Fisher with Pocket Now, and this is Samsung Galaxy S5 versus Nokia Lumia Icon. Just a quick note, folks, the Lumia Icon is a Verizon wireless exclusive here in the United States, but it's functionally very similar to the Lumia 930 available globally. So use this comparison as a loose surrogate for that face-off if you're outside the U.S. Also, we've already given each of these devices the full review treatment, so if you want more detail, check out those reviews at the links down in the description, and please subscribe to us both here on YouTube and on social media to keep up with the latest from Pocket Now. If you're shopping on specs, each of these represents the creme de la creme of its respective platform. For CPUs, you can't get much powerful than the Snapdragon 800 and 801, and 2 gigs of RAM is plenty in each case. Here in the States, the Icon edges out the Galaxy S5 in onboard storage, but the Samsung phone offers microSD expansion, while Nokia does not. Samsung's larger battery is also removable, its USB port is faster, and it has many more sensors than the Icon, including a fingerprint scanner and a heart rate monitor. The displays are the same resolution, they run on the same technology, and they're about the same size, but the Samsung panel can be made much brighter and also much dimmer. On top of all that, the Galaxy S5 casing keeps out dust, and it's water-resistant. So if you're looking for the ultimate combination of specs and customization, as always, it's tough to beat the Galaxy. But that feature load comes at a cost. To quote our own review observation, from a design standpoint, the plastic Galaxy S5 seems to have been engineered to avoid offending, surprising, or, or really moving anyone. It just kind of exists whereas the icon definitely makes a statement. Its corners are aggressively squared off, its aluminum sides adorned with bold racing stripes, its display glass curved at the edges like a puddle of liquid about to spill over the sides. It's heavier, thicker, and frankly less comfortable to hold than the Galaxy S5. But it also conveys a much stronger sense of quality and craftsmanship. It's got four microphones for audio recording and noise cancellation, built-in Qi wireless charging, and most importantly, it uses a nano-SIM instead of the Galaxy's older micro-SIM. Okay, maybe that's not so important. So let's talk about something that is, the camera. Ready for a shocker? Turns out Samsung's 16 megapixel sensor is no slouch and holds its own against the Icon's 20 megapixel pure view shooter under quite a few lighting conditions. This is a surprise because the Lumia line is known for its optical performance, and that's not just because of the dedicated shutter key. Nokia's PureView technology is supposed to deliver superior output, and it certainly does. But under automatic settings, we actually found ourselves preferring the Galaxy S5's pictures quite often, as they're more colorful and seem more alive under a lot of conditions. Nokia's edge comes in low light. Start experimenting with indoor and dimly lit environments and the contest just goes out the window. The Icon's camera is optically stabilized, so it can better compensate for hand movements, which is a big deal if you're taking a long exposure shot to let in more light. The Galaxy S5 can't do that, and as a result, the gulf in performance is quite wide in near pitch black conditions. The Lumia accomplishes much more with a much cleaner interface. If you really want to kick up the resolution and shoot 19 megapixel images in RAW format, you can do so. Or you can manipulate ISO and shutter speed to warp time, which we did with this 2.5 second exposure of a car going down the street at night. More casual Lumia users can also keep it set to standard and expect to get great results more often than not. The Icon's optical stabilization comes in handy for video as well. Despite its software stabilization, the Galaxy S5 really can't deal with any kind of hand movement during video recording, as happens if you're panning around a lot or just on a windy day. But again, the S5 surprises us here. Its colors may not be as accurate, but the slight oversaturation looks pretty good. And the aggressive audio cancellation on the Icon means our test audio can't really be heard over the wind many times, even with those four mics. On one of the windiest 
busiest days of the season. whole lot of wind coming from my right hand side. The bus is heading in the direction of the wind. We're checking auto exposure. Considering the Galaxy S5 can also shoot in high speed for slow motion playback and can shoot stills and video underwater, well, the camera comparison is no shutout, we'll put it that way. In software, the gulf between the Icon and the Galaxy S5 could not be wider. Aesthetically and functionally, these are black and white. Star Trek and Star Wars, Google and Microsoft. And so we're not spending much time talking about them. Not just because that would take 20 minutes that we don't have, but because deciding what platform you prefer is not an afterthought. A Windows Phone or Android is an entirely different question on its own. But if you need a quick summation, we'll say this. The software story mirrors the hardware situation. Samsung will give you almost every feature you can think of wrapped in a fairly complex, visually inconsistent experience, but it's one you can change with a custom launcher. Nokia gives you an elegant, simple, and very responsive user interface, but one with very little customizability and nowhere near as extensive an ecosystem. Using these devices on separate networks meant we couldn't directly compare things like reception and voice quality, though for what it's worth, both Verizon Wireless and AT&T offered outstanding coverage and good data speeds in the greater Boston area on 4G. Despite the difference in battery capacity, endurance is comparable, though the icon doesn't feature the ultra power saving mode of the Galaxy S5, and once again, you can't swap its battery like you can on the Samsung phone. And the speaker performance is also comparable. Loud enough, but nothing to get too excited about, considering the rear-firing loudspeakers on each device. We often say this, but that's because it's often true. Either way you go here, you're getting a variation on the best each platform has to offer. So no one should be returning a phone or regretting a purchase based on this comparison. Still, the differences here are legion. On paper, the S5 is definitely the winner. It's a much more versatile, more powerful device from a few perspectives, some of them truly surprising to us. While neither its hardware or software will be winning any beauty contests, it'll probably get the job done for you, whatever that job may be. Especially if you're deeply dependent on Google's ecosystem, or you need a smartphone that can handle a little rough-and-tumble action near the seashore. But where the Galaxy S5 is a sturdy utility vest, the Lumia is more like an expensive dinner jacket. More limited, yes, but also much more regal, more polished. While it doesn't do as much, unless you're a heavy Office or Outlook user, the things it does, it does with almost liquid smoothness, and it looks great doing them. Also, though its camera didn't destroy the S5 by any means, it still offers more tools and capabilities for photographers who want more control over their photos, or for those of you who spend most of your time in the darkness. So where do your priorities lie? Which would you buy? Let us know. Tell us which one appeals more to you down in the comments. And remember to check out our full review of each device at Pocket Now, linked in the description below. This has been Michael Fisher. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. I'm Michael Fisher with Pocket Now, and this is Samsung's Galaxy S5 up against Nokia's Lumia 520, 1020, 8280. Better take care if I find you've been creeping round my back stair. I'm Michael Fisher with Pocket Now, and this is Nokia's Lumia Icon. No, it's not. Extra large bed, a TV, and one of those little refrigerators you have to open with a key. Credit card? You got it. Did it, 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 did it,